So we have hubs and we have switches, and next we have multi-layer switches. Uh, before, we, before we hit multi-layer switches though, we want to mention that we have, just like our hubs have icons, our switches also have icons. Now our switches, you'll usually see their icon being four arrows going in alternating directions. So that'll be our switch icon on our network diagrams. What's the difference between our multi-layer switch and our standard switch? Well, our multi-layer switch can perform layer 3 as well as layer 2 operations. Now, if we remember our OSI model, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Our layer 2, our do part of that, is going to be data link layer. Layer 3 is going to be our networking layer. It's going to be our IP addressing layer. So, Multi-layer switch, it can perform routing and switching. If necessary, uh, we can perform routing functions on this multi-layer switch. So our multi-layer switch is going to perform all the standard operations of our standard smart, our, our standard switch will, uh, but our standard switch will only work at la is only working at layer two. Um, our multi-layer switch is going to be able to work at layer two and layer three. It's also going to be able to perform some routing if necessary. Uh, work in route data and uh, we may be able, even able to set up some VLANs and we may be able to set up um, some additional connectivity and additional settings on our multi-layer switch that we can't on our standard switch. So our multi-layer, if you hear a multi-layer switch or sometimes you may hear someone referring to a layer 3 switch or a layer 2 and layer 3 switch, um, they're referring to this multi-layer switch and when they're referring to this multi-layer switch they're referring to a switch that can perform additional functions other than just sending data to devices on the same network but may also be able to actually send data and recognize and look in look at the IP addresses of packets and look at the IP header information of packets and route that data if necessary. Lastly over here we have our bridges and our bridges are going to connect network segments. Now what do we mean by that? Well Let's imagine we have a big network. See if we can uh, make us some more space here. If we have a large network, we may not want all of our devices to be connected to a single switch. All of our devices may not be able to be connected to a single switch because of the size of, say, our building. If we may have multiple floors, and we may not want to have cables going from the first floor all the way up to the fifth floor. Uh, we'll need different devices. Uh, our Cables going from the first floor to the fifth floor may not be able, even able to um, go that length. They may not be able to send a signal across that length without an additional device on them. So our bridges allow us to connect these different network segments. So we have computers here on the first floor, computers on our second floor, and computers on the third floor. And all of these computers need to be on the same network. Well, rather than connecting them simply to switches, we can connect them to our bridges. And our bridges can connect these different network segments and they can help break up and they can help segment traffic. So we have our bridge here, we have our bridge here, we have our bridge here, we have our bridges connecting. We have some bridges that are able to actually break up and segment this traffic, much like our switches are able to manage, okay, I have this device on this port and I have this device on this port. Our bridges may say, okay, I have this device on my switch or I need to send this on to a different switch. So if we have computer A, B, C, D, E, and F, computer A and B are on the third floor or are connected to the third floor bridge. So if computer A is trying to send a packet uh, to computer B, then it doesn't need to have that packet propagated through all of the other bridges. So it'll send that packet and then bridge, bridge number three, our bridge on the third floor, will recognize, okay, yeah, this is, this is a packet that goes to someone on my, on my connection, on my connection to the network, so I'm not going to pass this along. But then computer A needs to talk to computer F. Computer F is on bridge one, so bridge three is going to say, oh, I don't have that computer on my bridge, so I'm going to pass this along. Computer two says, eh, I don't have this on my bridge. Computer 1 says, oh, that's me, and passes along to computer F, and then talks back up to computer A. 
So our bridges allow us to connect those different network segments and they also allow us to break up and segment, uh, segment traffic. Our bridges aren't going to be performing routing. They're not going to be performing at layer three. They're going to be performing at layer two, just data link layer. Our bridges allow us to connect different endpoints. Uh, they aren't routing network traffic. They aren't routing data, uh, inspecting those IP addresses, inspecting packets. Um, but they are able to manage by MAC addresses. So they will perf be performing at that layer two. They'll be performing at a data link layer. Now, bridges aren't just limited to wired bridges. We can also have wireless bridges. So say we have, um, we have our floors one, two, and three, but there's no feasible way for us to physically connect floors one, two, and three. For some reason, there's titanium floorboards or there's titanium ceilings or plenty of spaces in between floors one, two, and three, and we cannot connect a physical connection between these different bridges. So that's out. But the bad thing is we still need to get to the internet. And the internet comes in at our first floor. Connects here to this bridge. So how are we supposed to get out? Well, or how's, how are the people on floor three, two, and three and two supposed to get out? Because we can't have that physical connection. Well, we could have our router be a wireless router. We could have our wireless router uh, connect out wirelessly to all these different computers. But let's say for some reason we don't want to do that. We want to secure down our router. We don't want people to be able to directly connect to our router using a wireless connection. So we decide to create a wireless bridge. Now our wireless bridge will be right here on our connection connected to our router. And our wireless bridge will wirelessly connect to our bridges on the second and then maybe we have a repeater that will connect to our third floor. And then our computers will physically connect over to the bridges. So again, remember back to our de definition, our bridge is a device that connects network segments. So this entire diagram here is our same network. This entire diagram uses the same class IP addresses, the same network ID IP addresses, but because we can't physically connect them, we use wireless bridges to connect, and this is a wireless connection here, one to two and two to three, and then the network segments on the different bridges are physically connected to their corresponding bridges. So. That's the difference between our hubs, our switches, our multi-layer switches, and our bridges. And then lastly, our repeaters. Our repeaters are devices which increase a signal. So when we have a length of cable, we can only have a maximum length that we can send a signal down that cable before it starts to lose power, before the signal starts to degrade. Uh, this is because of electro, uh, mainly because of electromagnetic interference that is why we need is why we need different repeaters. Now, this electromag well, this electromagnetic interference in combinations with in combination with just standard uh, standard standard signals becoming too weak to get to their endpoint. Um, so, when we have a computer that's sending an electrical signal over a cable to get to the other end, um, even in a vacuum with no electromagnetic interference from the outside at all, that electrical signal is still energy that can only travel so far on a cable. It can't go indefinitely. So we need to have devices that can increase the signal, whether it's, whether it's by amplifying the signal or signal regeneration. Repeaters are typically no longer standalone devices. Um, when we're talking about sending signals across power lines or sen sending signals miles and miles, then yes, repeaters may be stand may actually be still standalone devices. But in our homes and in our um, in our offices, our repeaters are typically built in to our other devices. We may have a switch which also acts as a repeater because it has built-in capabilities to strengthen that signal. Or we may have a bridge or a multi-layer switch or a router which also acts as a repeater. Um, but repeaters are still devices which can be standalone devices. Now repeaters 
can amplify or they can perform signal regeneration. When we're amplifying a signal, we are giving it more power only. So we're only giving, we're taking a signal that's coming in and so we have our magical signal, uh, signal repeater box. So we're taking a signal that's coming in and it's getting kind of weak and we're just taking that exact same signal and we're copying it and we're blasting it out stronger with more electrical power. That's Amplify. Our signal regeneration actually cleans up that signal. So we have a signal that's coming in and is not only weak, but has had some electromagnetic interference with it. Um, it the signal isn't quite right. There may be some deformities in it and could result in uh, corrupted data being transferred if it were to go on without this repeater. So this repeater is going to take our weak our weak signal that has some disruption in it, that has some interference in it, and it's not only going to amplify it, but it's going to clean it up. So that's our difference between our amplify and our signal regeneration with our repeaters. Amplify is power only, and signal regeneration is cleanup and power. So just as a recap before we move on to our routers, our routing and switching allow us to connect devices over networks. They allow us to connect devices on our network or over other networks, multiple networks. Um, switching is on our same network. Routing is taking data and traversing different networks. Uh, our major devices are going to be our hubs, which are devices which receive data and send to all connected devices except the one that sent it to it. Our switches, which are like smart hubs. Remember, hubs are dumb, switches are smart. Uh, smart hubs are switches which actually can track MAC addresses to ports and send only to the intended party. Our repeaters which take signals and amplify them, power only or rege signal regeneration, clean them up. We have multi-layer switches which are s switches which can also perform routing which can perform at layer 2 or layer 3 or both. And then we have bridges which actually connect multiple network segments. So. We have all of our standard devices here, and now we're going to move on to our routers. Our routers are going to be, uh, it's a much bulkier segment, which includes a lot of different concepts to understand. So keep these in mind when we, as we move on.